Yo, what's good, y'all? Up to something. Media back up in here. It's been a while since you see my face and Daniel's face in, in, in some time in the same place. I feel like I've been coming out of retirement. But it's good to be back. You know what I'm saying? And it's good to be back. And we're going to do the intros. You know what I'm saying? You already know. Damn, it's, it's been boy. a minute. <laughs> it's been, yo, it's low-key been a little minute since I did the intros. Yo, it's your boy, Renee, a.k.a. Renee the Rager, a.k.a. Renee the Go, a.k.a. Sorak Obama and the official DJ name Cozy Campos that's in the building. That's, that's, a a one. that's a new one. That's a new one. But the you know most official one. Most official one. You know, people know me as other things. But you know what I'm saying? It's good to be back. It's good to be back. But who do I got to my left? Daniel. No nicknames. <laughs> standing on business. No, nah, standing, standing on, on business. business. Nah. That's that's uh Topo Garcia right there. Everybody know. Everybody know about Topo in the summertime, you know. Special but, guest though in the studio. In the stew, back in the stew, who we got? Yo, what's up, man? Juan Sal is here. You know, man, um, amazing, through. amazing to have you, man. You know what I'm saying? So, director straight from DFW, award-winning director, worked with Paul Wall, Rick Ross, you name it. This man is extremely talented, man. So, uh, thank you for coming on, man. I no, appreciate you for having me. Yeah, for man. Me. Yeah, man. So, you know, let's get into it. You know what I'm saying? You just put out a new movie called House of Dolls. Tell us about it, man. It's it's a horror movie. It's gory. It's bloody. What's going on? Yeah, like, yeah. It's our, tell our me new, what's the insane mind Yeah, it's our new slasher. Our, our new slasher. Um, we just, uh, we had screenings in New York, sold mm. out. Dallas wow. sold out in Beverly right. Hills. Jeez. We had a screening out there. You know, we just got back. Um, yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been a fun ride so yeah. far, getting all the reactions okay. uh, to House of Dolls. But um, yeah, it's our new slasher. It stars D. Wallace. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you remember her from uh, E.T. Yeah. Joe. Yeah. 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 E.T. E.T. You know what I'm saying? It's like my generation. You know what I'm saying? For the older crowd. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, I, I, I fuck with that. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. So it was great to work with her and also yeah. Miko Gattuso from Euphoria. Euphoria. Yeah. Yeah. Euphoria. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Season one, Mouse. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mouse. That's dope. So like, how, how is it to work with those that talent? You know yeah. What I mean? How is it? Was it like? You know, overwhelming was an amazing experience you know, with them. With, or? You know, Miko was the first one that got casted in the movie. Mm -hmm. And when he came on board, you know, it was it was an experience because as an actor, you know, so far, he he, he was very involved in the production. And, and and that was amazing. You know, he really gave his insight in the industry. He gave, he gave you know, advice. So it, it was amazing working with him. Right. And how hands-on he actually was, you know. So right. that was amazing. He told me about his experiences on Euphoria. Right. So that, that was really cool. Yeah. And working with Dee now, working with her, that yeah. was, uh, you know, I was already a fan, of course, of E.T. E.T., yeah. Surreal Kujo, moment. Joe, The Hills Have yeah. Eyes. So... And I was actually the one to pick her up at the airport. So really? I made sure that I was like, okay, great. So I got to ask her all these questions. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, she was a blast to work with. It was amazing working with her. Really? And so one of her experience. So, you know, on set, you know, she, we got right to it. You mm. know, all that had to get blocked out the way. You know, let's work. And she's an amazing lady. She only wanted to do her own stunts i couldn't stop her from anything oh wow if you've seen the movie you know what i'm talking about i couldn't okay. stop her she's like no one i'm going in i'm like <laughs> What's okay up, great man? let's do it go ahead <laughs> so that was amazing working with her you know she's right. she's the the original scream queen uh when she first screamed on set the peaks just blew out on the audio Jeez. i asked her like can you still scream and she just went for it <laughs> wow like, yeah no, she audio still got peaked it. gone so yeah she's the original scream queen yeah and she geez. uh she definitely showed us so that was amazing to see and you know her, yeah. seeing her at work yeah so um again i was when i picked her up at the airport took her back you know we had to make sure she had you know the vip right. experience nice. here in dallas so it was amazing working with her how'd you make that happen as someone who's so well known in the industry working on great films like how'd you make that happen is it simple as a dm you know, or it, it's uh it was an opportunity it's an opportunity is the best thing i can say and sometimes you got to go for it like honestly i i sent her agent the script and i didn't think she'd go for it i'm like there's no way so they got back to me that hey she d read it and she loved it and I was like, oh, wow, great. And I was like, yeah, I knew she would. <laughs> yeah. Great, great. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a so all, film, all yeah. it's going to plan. So anyways, yeah. uh, she responded, and uh, that's how it went about. 
And with anything, it's all about experience and what you're doing. You have to know what you're doing and you have to research and, and pay your dues. How you to know? sell the movie really right. before it even yeah, comes out, right? Before you even approach someone like that. Because this this film, uh, there was one I did before it called The Devil's Ring with Damien mm -hmm. Chapa. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember him from Blood In, Blood Out. Blood In, Blood Out, yeah. Have you, I don't know if you've seen him, but yeah. So yes. that gave me credibility to be able to approach other people, you right. know, other actors, established, established right, actors okay. to actually look at my stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's more so about experience mm -hmm. and you'll know when, you know, to reach out and things like right. that. Right. So yeah. like with like <laughs> the movie House of Dolls, like what was the idea behind it? Like, are you just like a huge like horror movie uh, yeah. person or like, Man, I'm you a, know, probably. Yeah, I'm a horror fanatic. Yeah. So I love, you know, movies and horror mm -hmm. movies. So I was wanting to make one. I did right. an experimental one before, but right. I knew it was, it was there was going to be a time where I would, would really do a slasher. Right. And, and that brought me to this one. Mm -hmm. So the funny thing is, all my movies, I really want to tell like a really personal story. I think mm -hmm. every good movie should have at least a, a story. Um, most of my films are dramas. If you, if you really watch them, mm -hmm. you know, there just happen to be, you know, genres on, on some of them. But with this one, it was no different. So the funny story is what I have three sisters. OK. And one day we were just talking and then we started talking about an inheritance. And then we just started <laughs> arguing. Right, and then right. I just left and started writing a script. <laughs> so, and they're all still alive too. It's all good. Yeah. So I wrote a script <laughs> and then uh, I found this crazy house in LA. Mm. It was like a, a setting. Mm. And I thought it'd be the perfect place to apply this story, you know, in that context uh, of a slasher in right. this setting. So that's how that came about. Wow. And um, that setting, uh, that location, I keep forgetting that lady's name, but she's amazing. The Backstreet Boys have filmed there. I think AJ filmed there. Okay. Maxim has photo shoots there. It's a very popular house. Right. But there's so many sections that no one used. So mm -hmm. when that whole idea came about, uh, that location really flourished the story. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the film, you know, the way it turned out, I'm very happy with. Because, again, it's a drama, but it's a horror film. Right. You know, I think the best stories are there's a story not just you know cut them up and stuff right. but um in this particular case that's how that went about with the movie okay yeah, yeah. so like when it comes to like the gory like you know because there's different types of horror films like slashers you have like you know paranormal things like that like monster movies like what like so you said you're like a slasher like fanatic and things yeah. of that nature like how much blood did you have to use for this movie oh man with this one not not enough. I would have went ham. <laughs> not, I would have went ham, and I think I did. We filmed a lot. I would yeah. say, you know, honestly, because there was a, a scene in in the for, in a pool, mm. we used about a good four to five gallons total Jeez. in the film. It should have been more, but Jeez. um, yeah, we filmed a lot of bloody stuff. Really? Shout out to our uh, you know our special effects artist uh, mm. uh, Tatiana. She did okay. amazing with all the. You know, it's all practical. Mm. So, you know, you got to get in the mix. So, yeah, we used a lot of blood. I would say five gallons. I would have used more. Maybe in the sequel. Yeah, I'm go maybe crazy the sequel? With, it. with such a gory film, do you ever yeah. feel like you, you're kind of like done with the blood? Like, you be like, you get off the set <laughs> one day, it's like, man, today's been a long day. I saw a lot you know, of blood. It gets messy. But, you know, you got to enjoy what you do. Yeah. Right. You know, funny story is uh, we have a, our, our DP, George uh, Prophecy. I don't know if you know him. He he does a lot of the big music videos here in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Anyways, he's always on set with a designer, and sometimes I'd be uh, surprising them like, "Hey, we're gonna shoot a bloody scene today." Yeah. So uh, I'm sorry. Anyways, um, one day he showed up on set and designer, and I'm like, "Bro, we're shooting a bloody scene," and when we were filming it, he just looks back at me like, "Bro, all this fucking <laughs> blood," and then I'm like, "Bro, don't worry about it." I pat him in the back, and I'm like, "Oh shit, my bad, bro." Jeez. He got like Versace on and oh. shit. He learned man. his lesson and quit. He's talking about yeah, the designer. Yeah. But that's a funny story uh, with, with all the blood. Um, yeah. It gets messy, but that's the fun part of it, you know, yeah. going and getting in the mix. And, um, you know, practical effects. Those are really like stuff from like the 80s, you know, yeah. when you got into like the upper in you know, the 2000s, it was it's mostly special effects. Mm -hmm. But I really think like movies in the 80s are all practical, like right. Jason, Chucky. Right. You know, everybody chasing you with yeah, a knife. It's all kind of thing. practical, yeah. and we right. don't have that big budget, so we have to do it practical. Right. And you want to make sure it, it looks good. You know, so I, I filmed a lot of things with a lot of blood. Some things got cut out. Mm -hmm. It didn't look right. I'm like, oh, this didn't look right. right. Let's do it this way. Or, man, that's too much blood. It's going to look all funny now. Right, right, so right. So you, you got to know when to really stop the blood. 
uh, you know, in that. Uh, like, what's your favorite horror movie? Just to say, Slasher, because I know it's a wide range. Slasher. I don't know. I just seen, like, I was really impressed with uh, Evil Dead. Um, that I just saw, that just came out. I was like, yo, this movie is crazy. Which the one? The, the, the new one, new one? Or the new, or, the or, new or, one, new one. The new one, new one that just came out. It was a 2012 one. That, yeah. That, that one was brutal as shit. Yeah, they, that they one was crazy. Are. That one yeah. was crazy. But the new one, the Evil Dead Rising. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. But I would even say, I don't know. Slasher, geez. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, yeah, we, the yeah. remake or the original? The original, and I, I don't, I don't discriminate. I think all the remakes are good because the story is almost the same. But I think yeah. it's it, the original one. You can't beat the original yeah, one, though. The OG, yeah, that's a good one. That's yeah, the yeah. first one that scared the hell out of me because I think it's like the <laughs> first. First, it has Texas in the title, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's it's close to home, right? Yeah, so you gotta right, watch. Right, right, and then right, it's right. that the beginning. I think it's like the first movie that I saw that said based on a true story. And like as a naive kid, like you believe it, like oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah exactly. this should really oh, happen. Shit. Yeah. I was like, yo, he's oh. in my backyard, low key. You yeah, know? like so, like that one, I think left the most impact on me. Yeah, yeah, I think for me, like my favorite horror movie. I mean, as far as a slasher, now it, it kind of has to be The Hills Have Eyes, the remake. Really, Alejandro. Aja. You know, D. Wallace was in the the original one with the one from the eighties. Yeah, with Wes Craven. Oh wow, he did the original one. I like the the, the remake because it's just it's, it, again it's brutal. But that Evil Dead one from twenty twelve, yeah, that one that I crazy. went back to watch it and and God damn it's brutal it, bro, as fuck, it's dude. Bad. It wasn't as gory. It, the first one's definitely gorier than the second one, the new yeah. one that just came out. But yeah, no, nah, man, when that chick is taking the the glass out of her face, I, I went back and watched it. I was like, holy shit, yeah, I, yeah like I mean, that's the kind of movie I want to make, you know? Right. And, and you know they had that little, but that was all practical too. Right, they had a budget though. Right. You know, um, I would say, yeah, those. And of course, would I you think say it, Saw? Would you say Saw, Saw is a, is a, is a, is a I enjoyed the kinda? first one. Right. Yeah. They kind of do overkill with like all the remakes. Yeah. They're not, they're not the sequels and stuff. I love like it that. as a franchise, but I know well, for me, it kind of rooted in Seven, you know, Seven with uh, Brad Pitt. You know what I'm saying? The way that. Yeah. Uh, after Saw 3, I was like, yo, is, is this over? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, How yeah, much yeah. other things could you come up with to be like fucked yeah. up? You know what I'm saying? I enjoyed this. But, I enjoyed it. But yeah, after like two or yeah, after three, it was like, okay, here we go. Yeah. What I, about Halloween though? Because Halloween, Halloween has hella Halloween. remakes and he just keeps coming Man, back. And I back. fucking yeah. love Halloween. I, I hope he keeps coming back. You know who <laughs> really? will. Fuck yeah, dude. All of hey, well, hold on. Um I, don't know, I got introduced a little late into Halloween. Of course, the original right. was always badass. Right. I, I don't know why I loved H2O. And it was, I guess this was in the 90s. It sure yeah. Is that the one with Buster Rhymes? Yeah. The one where LL Cool J knows yeah. LL Cool J. Yeah, Buster yeah, Rhymes yeah. is the next one. I didn't okay, like that yeah. one too much. Yeah. But the new ones are even pretty cool. You know, the the new ones, uh, those are pretty cool as well. So I love the Halloween ones. Yeah. You know, th they're always going to come back. The right? Rob Zombie one is really good, too. Yeah. That one I remember. Yeah, that, the Rob Zombie one is really good. That was like early, like late, late 90s 2000, or two, yeah. early, early 2000s or 2000s, something. 2000s, like yeah. yeah. I know uh, his sequel gets a lot of shit, but I love that one. Really? The Rob Zombie, the second one. Yeah. Because it takes place at a like a big Halloween party. Yeah. And you haven't oh, really yeah. seen that in yeah. Halloween yeah. movies. It's Halloween, but you don't really see the Halloween element. Right. And I think he just went left field with it, like a fucking horse and shit. I don't, right. like, I don't know if I can cuss on this. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Like, like a horse and shit. I'm like, what the hell? You don't expect that. Like a white horse. I don't know if I was just stoned or what. I was like, yeah, holy yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I, yeah. I enjoyed it and it's right. brutal. And then you got Chucky, uh, Brad Dorf in it as the yeah. cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I I, I look at it now. It's like, man, that, that's a really good piece of, of work, you right. know, in general. And that one gets a lot of shit, but I loved it. You know, There's a lot of good high budget horror movies, but have right. you ever seen like low budget horror movies, like straight to DVD? <laughs> like, the, like the Tubi ones? <laughs> like, nah. like, no, like <laughs> yeah, when I used nah. to go to Blockbuster, like. <laughs> you would always find like the most random ones like Jack Frost like like it's oh, like an yeah, evil yeah, an yeah, evil yeah, snowman yeah. or like an evil oh, gingerbread man right. or like, a leprechaun back in the hood ooh, you know those, what I'm saying yeah, yeah. That, classics, that, classics. Yeah. classic 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 those, those get wild I yeah. think now especially after like Blair Witch they're far and few but I don't know if you've seen or heard of a recent one called Skim a Rink mm -mm. no it, it's out right now okay. and the way they filmed it it's so abstract mm. that um it's just weird uh, really? the way horror goes with that but as far as a low budget film that hasn't really been like this one's blue you know it blew it blew up yeah. uh, on the internet i only because i know the producer uh, right. I, I was lucky enough to get a one-on-one -on -one with him you know mm. um uh, advice mm. so that's one of the lower indies but yeah they all get the opportunity depends on the platform like ours is also independent mm. um the cool thing with us is um we're actually on the front of voodoo right now 
I like, saw your yeah, story. Yeah. Straight you up, scroll, yeah. Like, yeah. yes, you know, it says Halloween special or something. Right underneath is us. Right next to fucking Sharknado. <laughs> yeah, of all fucking dope. things, Sharknado. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's iconic, man. Yeah, yeah. congrats <laughs> on that, man. Congrats. So that's on that. badass, and and so that's great to look at. And we're independent, so yeah, it's a tough game because right. it's so so saturated. Yeah, like you said, Tubi. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. that place has it all. Yeah, I'm you, not going just, on there. Yeah, you're like, yo, I'm, that's I know. the last for me. We're on Voodoo, yeah. Amazon Prime. Yeah, they yeah. shout out Netflix, get me on there. No, 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 this is Tubi, but <laughs> yeah, no, this is Tubi, too. Yeah, yeah, but I'm sure you find a lot of stuff, stuff in there. Right. But it's tough to stand out, and I applaud anyone who goes for it, whatever platform you get. You know, any right. Tubi, anything, anything that gets you out there. That's the important thing mm -hmm. that you get out there and. You know, I would say that to any filmmaker that's that's pursuing it, because right. it is tough. And to as an independent film, you know, you're competing in an oversaturated market. Right. You know, so you it's, really do what you can yeah. to stand out and things like that. But the yeah. genre that's so overgeneralized and like so many themes have been repeated over and over across time, right? When you're shooting the film, is it your goal to like stand out? Like, hey, I really want to stand out in in this horror movie genre. Yeah, you know, you have to to stand. Uh, you have to. That's the only way you can get in certain situations. And we try to be as original as possible. I think that's the best thing to do: originality, and bring what you bring to it. For example, in House of Dolls, a lot of people like this one scene where I inject a hip hop music to a death scene. Yeah, there's oh, a bunch of death scenes, yeah. but you've never seen that really. Can you no. name one movie, horror movie, where the, where the killer you kill someone to some hip hop music? Nah, and I and that and that's the unique. I thing. think I've seen techno maybe, but yeah, I brought my I brought my own <laughs> thing to it, you yeah. know. And that's what we wanted to do. Even with the creation of the killer and the movie, we wanted it right. to be different, not what you've already seen. A lot of things have already been done. Everything's been done, but it's kind of right. how you get there and what, what what you're throwing into it, I, I think. It's about perspective. It's like yeah. your POV of like how you see things. Yeah, yeah. You know so um, it was good to get reactions in New York and other places because they're like, we haven't really seen that. Like, yes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there was dope. like a, one death scene that I'm happy about. You, right. I, you haven't really seen it. And that's what I try to do uh, right. for the most part. Even with our killer's design, um, it's always like a, a guy in a suit and a white mask. Right. Well, this guy, I wanted something that would be easily, you know, you would recognize instantly. Mm -hmm. He's very subjective, but, you know, he's a rocker. So he got this trench leather coat, you know, Dang. and he has a pink mask. The way I went about that was this. Like, I was just like, if you're a killer and you're going right. to go find a mask, where are you going to go? Like, go to like, honestly, you're going to go on Amazon. If it's not Halloween, you're shit out of luck. Yeah. Right, I think anyone yeah. doing anything is going to get a ski mask. Right. right? So you, I went to the store just to go buy a ski mask. Right. And there happened to be a pink one. And then I was like, oh, the house is pink. This is my look cool. Right, right, right. <laughs> so right. our uh, Trey Payton, uh, not Trey, uh, one of our other assistant actors, he came through and he put the suit on. It looked dope. And I was like, this guy's a rocker. Mm. So he, we put spikes on it. And I think it came out perfect because, mm -hmm. um, again, the movie's very subjective. Mm -hmm. Depends on the person. It could be funny. It right. could be scary. You might right. cry. You might hate it. You might be feel very nostalgic about it. The spikes. Where do you recognize from? You could be, you could feel very nostalgic about it. Mm -hmm. But that was that's the goal is to create something that you feel like you've seen before, but it's Emotion. different. Right. It's different in every kind of way. As a slasher, you know, the, the killer going after the group of kids, it's just about how you go about it was right. the best thing for us. All right. So like what like uh, before, like we, we get into it. Um, so with like horror, like, do you feel like that's like your favorite genre? Would you want to do more than horror? Like what's another genre that you feel like you would want to do? You know, to direct? I did a crime drama a long time ago called the Triple D. That was just a straight crime drama. Okay. Then I did a, a psychological dra uh, drama called mm -hmm. Alp. Mm -hmm. Then I did Wolfcatcher. That's another crime drama. Mm -hmm. Devil's Dream was very much a drama. It just had action in it. So I think drama is something I played with. Mm -hmm. Horror, what's, what's great about horror is that it's very experimental. You can do anything. There's so many things you can do and you can make mistakes. It's a horror movie. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like everyone rags on a horror movie, like any horror movie that comes out. So it's kind of expected. And my challenge with this was like, I don't care. I know I'm going to go in. People, people might like it. They might hate it. And that's the beauty of it. I, and that's why i like horror will i do other genres yes i do have like i have a bunch of scripts written it's something i definitely want to go towards uh you know other genres um comedy maybe <laughs> you know you might even trip out if i say a romance but 
I my, love I love romances. Yeah, yeah. Like, bro, that, like where, <laughs> I'm, where I'm going is not really where you see a lot of other directors. Like, I jumped in drama, horror movie. That's gonna be unexpected, mm. and that's where I'm going. Like, I'm trying to get to the Academy Awards, to those Oscars. That's what they want to see, mm. and uh, to get there, you got to reach for it. You know, right. unexpected things. Someone's like, "What the fuck? How's Wong gonna do it?" fucking romance like, i'm sure someone's <laughs> gonna die in this like all right. kinds of nah, shit right it's like it'd be it's my always... type of like it'd be my type so it'd be crazy it'd, that'd be kind of cool doing a, a horror trippy. romance yeah it'd be some crazy about shit it. there's so many things to do but um that's the thing with film and expression it could be anything of anything it's like a canvas of, of your own yeah yeah basically so okay. you know and that's how we, you know we try to go at it as soon as the movie releases just like uh house of dolls just dropped how soon do you get back into writing another script or pushing for well, for another movie? Yeah, well, I do have like five other scripts written. Mm. Uh, House of Dolls does have a sequel written already. Oh, dang. And ready to go. And everyone's just been bombarding our... Um, if if anyone's watching, watching uh, at VMI Worldwide is our distributor. Everyone's been bombing them with the sequel, sequel, sequel. We actually yeah. just got feedback that the film is outperforming a lot of indies on streaming. That's why we got wow. to the top of Voodoo. Nice. Yeah, that's that's right out the gate. So uh, the response has been amazing. And where I am right now, I'm just kicking back to see how it plays out because, yeah, every decision is important. And um, I would love to do the sequel. I had a lot of fun with this one. I would love to do the sequel. But if it doesn't play that way, I do have another horror movie written and ready to go. Right. So I think it's safe to say I'd probably, I'm probably going to go into production next year right after summer. Yeah. Give it this one a little Around breather. And if it's the sequel to this one, then that's what we're going to do. Everyone's excited and ready right. to come on board. The feedback's been great. And if anyone, you know, definitely go watch the movie and, and see what you like. You know, if you like it, go yeah. tag the studio. No, that, that, need that, to. That, that's how you got to do it, you know. No, for sure, for sure. So... Um, before we get out of the horror topic, one more question is yeah, sure. what, like, out of all, like, the, like, Jasons, the Chuckies, all that stuff, who would be, like, in what horror film would you feel like you would survive in? Man, I want to survive anything. <laughs> I'm going to get taken out pretty quick. What do, you, what do you think is the best chance well, of you shit. surviving in a horror film? Like, Man. if there was one horror film, you feel like, yo, I can beat this person. Man, probably Chucky. I'd kick him. I'd kick That's him and run. That's what I'd be telling people. But you probably think you'd get away. You might chuck a knife at you. Probably, you That's know? what I'm saying. I'm like, he he don't got precision like that. Like he don't got that. Okay, what horror you know? movie you think you can get out of? Because honestly, I don't see you getting out of alive at Loki, any movie. <laughs> I'm gonna come clean. Annabelle, like Annabelle, Annabelle. Annabelle any of those dolls. Holy I agree with shit. you. I can kick the shit out of them. Leprechaun. No, you know he's no. not a doll, but he he got yeah, you know spiritual I got possession, hype, huh? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But oh, but that's the thing too. Like some like. You know, some paranormal shit, some possession shit. It's like, yo, they could, you know, yes, take over my body and shit. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But I would say Chucky. I would say Chucky. What about you? What about you? I, yeah. I'll go 1v1 with, like, any of those big guys. Like, Jason, no, Jay, Freddy Krueger, or Michael Myers. I feel like one, <laughs> yeah, you one know, on one, you know. Hell no. The survivors in all those movies are usually always circumstantial, you know. It's probably going to be the chick. Like a plot twist. Uh, yeah, like a so plot you armor. Know, your chance is pretty low. It's like, yeah. damn. Nah, I'm just built different, though. Like, I nah, could I, you, you I think could you toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jason? Easily. Nah, oh, bro, you sick. Yeah, the bro. only way I'm surviving, I'm taking off out of there. I know what I wouldn't is Freddy, bro. Freddy Krueger, I could never. I could Because he's going to be in my nightmares. If I'm going to sleep, he's going to be there. Well, they always you know miss I mean? the first red flag. And it's like, you know what? It, maybe it's nothing. Maybe we should stay here in this haunted house in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. Uh, no, I'm getting the fuck out of there. Like, first red flag. You know what's hilarious? Uh, it's kind of funny story. We're, we're in a, for our uh, Beverly Hills premiere. We went to Santa Monica, and we had a stunt guy dress up as the killer. So he went through Santa Monica, and if you could look on my Instagram, it was funny getting reactions because one security guy just took off running. Oh, <laughs> I know he was making funny, okay, but he okay. like, he gets the idea. Yeah. He just took off running. Yeah, yeah. So that was funny uh, getting reactions as well. Damn. But yeah, uh, survivability in movies are pretty slim. It's slim, but hey, I feel like you know I I think I could do it, man. Chucky, I think yeah, so. you can do it too, man. Now I know you mentioned you like to bring in like personal stories, and when you come when it comes yeah. to directing movies in this genre of horror, has anything paranormal or scary ever happened to you in real life? Life. you know i try to stay away i did do this this uh sleep paralysis uh, experimental movie called alp and um so we had to deal with a lot of uh exorcism type of elements and i don't really 
play with that stuff or fuck with it or Ouija board or any Jeez, of that hell stuff. Hell no, take me out. You know, I don't even <laughs> play with it. So we had to do research and stuff. And after a while, you listen to so much music. Yeah. It gets trippy as hell. Yeah. And I know it had nothing to do with it, but like the day before, like this giant tree in the back of my yard just fell into my house. Just boom. And it was just like, it was just weird. And I know it had nothing to do with it, but I'm like, that tree fell. At that time, whenever then, you're researching sleep Yeah, paralysis. two weeks later, while we're still filming, the other tree falls. Oh, and it was it had to have been because they were kind of old already but it was just kind of odd and um, coincident that they yeah fell. Like, that's super coincidence like yeah the fucking the, the the it was a huge tree caved into the it almost went into the room to the bedroom where i sleep but yeah yeah um we were listening to a lot of horror movie stuff and uh it gets creepy i don't even play with that shit i barely I barely watched either, man. Exorcist. Have you seen Exorcist recently? The new, the, one. The, the, new one. the new one's Bro, good. No, I heard someone asked good. me to go watch that. I told them no. Have y'all seen the original one though? Yeah, of yeah. course. No, I haven't. I haven't. You haven't. No, because yeah. things like that really do scare me though. Bro, like that's yeah. why it is traumatizing. Bro. You know what? Something trippy. Even on that same subject. When I was a kid, I was gonna go watch it because it got re-released in theaters in '97. Yeah. I was 11. The theater blacked out. It didn't work. It's oh, only a good geez. thing it didn't. No sir. Because I went because I didn't see it. I went back to watch it when I was. 18 or 19 mm. first time watching the exorcist people have already seen it bro i was like what the fuck <laughs> i heard yeah, that movie yeah. was a big deal because when it first dude. came out people were like crying throwing dude. up like they had heart bro, attacks like you, no i don't know if you bro there's a ch the, that little chick is stabbing herself or dude. masturbating with the fucking yeah crucifix. pissing herself bro, it is brutal shit. like crazy i was like what the hell i barely had to pause it and then and then i got oh. to finish it in pieces the exorcist I went to go watch it recently again, and it's a great drama buildup. And but it is insane, bro. You have to watch it. Nah, that's scary. You it just, is you just no, scary. Yeah, bro. <laughs> it is bro, not oh scary. God. It is demonic. Someone bro, asked me to go see the new change. one, and I said no. Like, I was like, I'm not trying. I'm to down. Go. Hey, let's go, bro. Watch it, and have you seen it? I, you've already seen it, right? Yeah, I've seen. I've seen. Yeah, but it's. I feel like sometimes with remakes, they always have like another twist to it you know what i mean yeah i don't think they can top that original one it was insane that oh. one uh yeah i went back to watch it um you know the only other movie that kind of scared me like that i don't know if i was just stoned but i was watching the conjuring, <laughs> the conjuring. Uh, okay, okay. i had a fucking Shake panic attack oh my god i was like what Shake the fuck is going on i was like bro i was in the theater and it's loud bro. so at the end i was like i had a full-blown panic attack i was like oh, bro the conjuring 2 the conjuring 2 the scariest movie of all time yeah, and you know it's All not time. even if I think about it, it's not really that scary. But the way they execute it is perfect. You know, James Wan, he's an incredible director. He is. You can only dream of executing things like that, and you try to work towards it. But that's the only other movie I can say that it was just, it, yeah, it yeah, me, it was man. trippy. That paranormal shit, man. I'm just like, yeah, because it's, it's that shit. And I'm like, I go to church the next. What's day. another one that it was like that? It was uh the guy that did Midsummer, um, Hereditary. Oh, Hereditary. Hereditary. Those A twenty four horror movies. Jeez, no, yeah, Midsummer Louise. and Hereditary. That movie is disturbing. Like that type of horror is it's elevated horror. Yeah, that one. When that kid started losing it in, in the right. classroom, I paused mm -hmm. it. I said, "Fuck this." <laughs> 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 no, I don't believe in that no. shit, but I don't no. play with it at the same time. And I hear these stories, but yeah. I had to pause it. I like, <clears throat> bro, I got to pause this shit. So I came back to watch it. I fast forwarded. I'm like, okay, it can't be that bad. So I got towards the end of it. That movie's great. Yeah. Hereditary. Hereditary is really good. Really, yeah, A24 really good. does a. I, I always talk about A24, how yeah, they make really does. great films. And like, but those, the Hereditary and Midsummer. Yeah. Nah, yeah Midsummer yeah. was pretty trippy. Nah. It was so bright. Yeah. And they have a new one that did really well too. The one where they like connect with the demons. Let me. Is it the one Let Me Let In? Let Me In? Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, that one too. Really? I heard it's really good. I need to see that one. Yeah, yeah. I need. I need definitely to see that it. one. I did do because it doesn't seem too scary, but like <laughs> he's a scaredy cat. Yeah, I really am. Like that one. I was like, I have a friend that's really big yeah, fan of horror movies. Stuff, I don't know why it makes you an easy, but slashers I can watch it all day. I can watch that all day. Saw, like that, yeah, any day. Boom, yeah. you know, it's all good. No, nah, Saw's different, man. Saw's different. No, nah, slashers are are because they're not scary. Like the, the factor in that that scares you is all the blood and like yeah. you know what? And uh, just just because just, we're talking movies, have y'all seen Terrifier? No. no. Yeah, that one's uh it's a slasher. Shout out to them. It's fucking nasty though. Yeah. Like Damn. it gets so nasty. And that's cool because there's an audience for everything in horror, you know, and that's yeah. the beauty of it. Shout out to them. My movie's more accessible because mm -hmm. I like the nineties, like Scream. I know what you mm -hmm. did last summer. The classic. I know what you they did weren't, last summer. Geez. They weren't so explicit. Urban legend. I yeah. love that one. I yeah. I loved I know what you did last summer. It's just the way that they shot it, the cinematography and everything. Right. So 
House of Dolls very much, um, you know, is a product of the 90s, I would say, because um, it's accessible. You can have fun mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. Right, right, it's right. It's still right. gory, but you can have fun with it. No, for sure. On that but, note. So going into directing and, you know, you have like a, a, a large resume, not only in, in film, but also in music as well. So you've done things with Bun B, Rick Ross, Paul Wall, like playing how, skills, playing skills, all, you know, all these, you know, Texas legends as well. Do you know what I mean? So like, how'd you get into that? Like, how did that, you know, transition from music videos into film? So like, what made you? Yeah, well, uh, music videos was really my start. Um, mm -hmm. I started at the Art Institute of Dallas to okay. learn uh, filmmaking. And um, I wanted to do movies, but it's, it's, you gotta do it in steps. So right. I really got thrown into music videos, working mm. with playing skills. Um, and then from there I got to work with Bun B, you know, Rick Ross is on set hanging out. So I got to work with the likes of him. That's it was amazing. fun directing him. Got to work with Paul Wall, Little John would jump on set, Pitbull before he blew up internationally. Yeah, Mr. Worldwide. That was crazy <laughs> to be around all them. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was amazing. Uh, in Atlanta, you know, it's, it's always great networking in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I was at T-Pain's house one day. <laughs> oh, I geez. swear to God. Uh, that's when he had the club at, downstairs at his house called uh, Club Yes and Like It, whatever. That's what? what it's called. That's how you know it's a wristband. Oh, uh, Club geez. Yes and Like It. So okay. I was down there. I was thrown. I see DJ Khaled walking by. I'm like, you just want to say, we the best, boy. <laughs> Let's but go I didn't golfing. Say anything, I'm like, nah, bro. Let's go golfing. <laughs> Keep it together. That's before he went super big. And then you see Chucky hanging out. That little dude. That yeah, 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 yeah. Man, he was walking around with the. Uh, he was walking around too. So it was, it was, a, uh, it was a great experience being in the music industry. Yeah. I think it really sharpened me up for what was to come, because mm. that's what it is. Music videos. It really just sharpens you for what's for what's next. Right. And. Um, with that is where I got my experience and then decided to go into film. Mm. And, uh, you know, with film, it's a grind, you know, you got to really, you got to put in a lot of work. Right. But that's basically how I transitioned into film. And that was a whole nother grind in itself. Right. Just because I know like with music videos, it's like three to five minutes max, depending on if you want to make a, a, a mini like short film and go into a full feature film. It's like another hour 30 to two. Yeah. You go from three to minutes plus, to yeah. an hour and a half. Yeah. It's a lot. It takes like a week or two to, to edit a three minute video correctly. Right. So an hour and a half is like, Oh my God, you're talking Lots. about hours on hours, Yeah. at least 10 hour, 12 hour days on the computer, Jeez. you know, for months. What was the first step that you took from making music videos into like, okay, this is going to be my first featured film. Um, yeah. So the, uh, one of the first movies I did was, uh, the triple D. Mm -hmm. uh, with Big Chief, Mr. Lucci, let Dallas Legends. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, it, the idea was something like Belly. Yeah. So oh, okay, but like yeah. Dallas. That was my natural transition right there. You okay. look at it, it's like okay, hip hop. He came from hip hop. He did hip hop. Oh, that like makes big sense. Movie. Yeah, right. From there, then I went off on my own after that and did Alp. Was just only actors, mm -hmm. and uh, now I've only been working with actors uh, for the most part. Okay, so nice. that's how that transition. That's that's where it happened, right? Right. There. So when when it comes to like the music industry, would you ever like go back into music, making music videos, or like now that you have like more Hell vision no. and stuff, like Hell you want to go no. back? No, no, no. I lo I loved it, man. It was the craziest time of my life. Yeah, it was in my twenties, so it was the perfect uh, time. Uh, now I'm older. It's like I ain't got time for all that <laughs> partying. <laughs> yeah. Hell no, they used to keep me up for like a whole night, <laughs> like from 10 p.m. to right. 6 p.m. You know, it was a big Jeez. party. I loved it. Yeah. But my time was up with that, man. It was an yeah. incredible experience. Any upcoming filmmaker, if you're hungry, that's where you go. Mm. So I think it was just a matter of uh, me just going to the next level. And uh, but it's deeply rooted in who I am. Like, again, if you watch my movies, they have hip hop in it. Right. It's deeply rooted in who I am. So um, that will always be a part of me, mm. you know, regardless. Right. And uh, it, it's, it's the music industry is a motherfucker. Really? So like what, what like <laughs> what do you like out of all the artists you've worked with? Like, who is somebody you enjoyed working with? Yeah. The most like a good story. Like, you know, who is like a, a star struck? You know artist? what? Uh, it was it's always it was it was all an experience working with Big Chief, the Don yeah, Dallas, nice. yeah. Big Chief. Hell yeah, man! Working with him, it was it was an, always an experience because yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Chief working with him, it was amazing because the atmosphere, yeah, of everything. But Chief always looked out, you know what I'm saying? Right, uh, Chief, you know. The budget was always good. I got <laughs> yeah. I put you this way. I, he, yeah. he hired me one day. I showed up with Gucci's the next day. Yeah, yeah. Bro, he was like, like, yeah, let me go to the Gucci out, store. Man, that, that's the dawn right there. Yeah. So that was an experience because I was a fan before anything. Right, right, right. right and right. I didn't know he was from Dallas when I first approached him. And uh, I was like, who's this dude? He's like, no, he's from Dallas. 
And yeah. I said, what? And he only had one music video before mm-hmm. Broomtown right. did it. But they, but he did it like years ago. This was before the internet really blew up and stuff. Right. And then I found him and I'm like, bro, we got to do a music video. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah, we yeah. just started doing music videos. And, uh, and it, you know, just went from there. And it was fun in that. Yeah, maybe you should have him featured in like one of your next films, like a horror film or something right, like that. Right, to come back. You know, yeah. he did play the uh, the lead villain in the first Triple D movie. Okay, you okay. You know what I'm saying? But again, that's like belly. Uh, but yeah, you know, it'd be fun to bring, you know, people back down the road. Do you ever see yourself making another Dallas-based movie? Uh, You know, art is just depends on the time. So it would, it would always it would be a matter of where I am in life, would it require it or, or right. whatnot. It's very much a matter of how I'm feeling, you know, right. one day I might feel like this, like that. Uh, but it's always for me, it's always about progressing forward. Yeah. You know, I kind of been there, did that. So now it's like, what's next? I did a boxing movie. Great horror mm-hmm. movie. That's cool. What's next? You know, I need to go get that Oscar. You know nice. what I'm saying? Jeez. Yeah. Get that. Hey, I've, yeah, I yeah. totally have faith in you, man. But you got to build it. You know, you got to start from the ground. So everything right. is, is meaningful in whatever you do and anything that anyone does, I would say. Right. So, you know, take it. What what really pushed you to to be a film director? What was it growing up that you, maybe you saw or man, maybe you I, met? I've always been a fan, man. Like no shit, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. I think this is the first time I saw Jurassic Park on the screen, a big ass yeah. dinosaur. Yeah, I'm like what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For sure. For yeah, sure, yeah. For sure. uh, so and then with horror movies, I ain't gonna lie, Chucky traumatized the shit out of me, Same. dude. I was probably like three or four when I saw it. I don't know what my Damn. dad was thinking. Dude, I saw that. I was traumatized for 10 years. I couldn't see anything. What? I was just thinking about, like, man. So it's always just been in me, you know, the enjoyment of entertainment. Right. You know, especially being where I'm from, it was kind of, I'm, I'm originally from Fort Worth, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I, I was there, grew up there until I was 18. When I was 18, I came to Dallas, to the Art Institute of Dallas, living at the dorms for, like, 10 years. So I was all, I lived there for, like, 10 years. So, um yeah, yeah, with that, it's it's just a, it's a process and all that. Right, and go ahead. There's a, there's a lot of technology that co- has been coming out since, of course, when we were kids, right? What Do you feel like it's easier to become, like, a director? If you want to pick up directing, do you feel like it's easy? Because, like, we see kids that start shooting music videos like you did, right? And now they're creating, like, short films that are really well um, shot. So do you feel like there's a big difference in well, your it's, time it's definitely accessible and it changes as you go it's just more accessible as you go is what i've seen now you got access to more things like you have more, a lot more at your disposal with the internet mm. and it just p- depends what you do with it so it definitely got easier in any way you can express yourself i definitely you know recommend to anyone how are you doing regardless of the success it's, it's always going to vary right but um for anyone picking up a camera it is easier now than ever so you can definitely do it for sure since it is easier, if any, if any young director, any young filmmakers out there watching, is there something that you would like to tell them? Uh, you know, go for it. You know, oh yeah, in, this is circles back to what this previous question. You know, I'm originally from Fort Worth, and it wasn't like you can't be a director. What? Right. You kind of get laughed at for it, actually. You know, but it mm-hmm. wasn't until like what you got a music video with playing skills and Bun right. B, then it's like yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, like you watch my shit to... on your car thing right there <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm saying in the so, back of an explorer on the head yeah, <laughs> go, yeah. Go the, hey that, that was the era when everyone had screens so yeah, my name yeah, was yeah. on everything Juan Salas, Juan Salas, oh, boom, nice. boom. That's, you know is... and they don't believe you till they see it and they saw it on their dash so yeah to anyone out there yeah you gotta just go for it regardless right you know what i'm saying and um for sure that's great yeah. advice man because i mean i feel like a lot of people don't really go for it because they need that like you know Oh, like that cosign. You're like, oh well, you know, until you get that cosign, people start validating you. Like, oh no, this person's valid. Yeah, it's always gonna be a grind. You know, that's with anything in life. Right, right. So um, you gotta just stick to it, and if if you enjoy something, just do it. Yeah, I mean, what what does it matter anyways? Yeah, fuck it. It's all trial and error, and all trial. Being from the DFW, do you take a look at and see if there's any uh, uprising talent coming from the city? Like maybe someone that you can take under your wing. You know. Uh, there's a lot of talent. I wish I had someone to take me under their wing when I was coming up because we didn't get none of that <laughs> over here in Dallas. You know, LA is a little different, but yeah. there's a lot of people, and it's a grind again. Mm-hmm. It's, I'm still grinding, I'm still beginning. This is my first step. It might look like I'm doing nice, right? But it's my first step. Um, if there was someone I would see out there really grinding, I would definitely, if anyone was to reach out for advice, I would definitely give it because that's something I didn't have for sure. Nice. I didn't have nobody to call. Good. And if there was a director, 
it would be music videos and they sure as shit ain't giving you no type of leads. Yeah. So it was all trial and error for me. So I would say if I see someone really doing it, I'd throw you throw them a bone just to be like, you know what? I didn't have no one do that for me. Nice. Yeah. And I wasted a lot of time, not wasted, but it was a grind. Right. Sometimes you have to learn for yourself though. Cause that's the only way to, to go about it. Cause no one's going to help you. Right. But if there's a bone to throw, I'll definitely do that. For nice. sure. That's what we need more. Yeah, we, we need, need more, more of that. that. Yeah. No, for sure, for no, sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah, man. So, man, it's been a pleasure, honestly, having you on, like, having this conversation, bro. Like, everything, like, from the horror films, I'm glad that, you know, you can survive one of them. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> Chucky? If you're watching, my boy Juan wants some rounds with you, my boy. So, pause. <laughs> pause, pause, you know what I'm Yeah, saying? yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, House of Dolls is available now yes. on platforms Voodoo. It's on the front page. It's on Amazon. Uh, it's about to go international. I just got word that we're performing so good. It's about to go international. Germany, oh, let's wants, go. Nice. Germany wants it first. So uh, we're just going with it. And to anyone watching, man, go check it out. You're going to like it. October yeah, is the perfect month. If you October. like the spooky vibes, if you like being spooky hours, if you like getting scared, this is the movie for you. Check it out. Yeah, yeah for sure. Oh, before before we I, I forgot to ask this question. So yeah, yeah. The, your awards, your your accolades, all the things you've been through, all the, the film festivals, like which one? was like your like the one that meant the most to you like your award man probably the first one because i didn't win shit before then <laughs> before then it's like i'm gonna quit this shit it's over yeah, yeah and yeah. it was like just getting that first one was like oh man you're on the right page even if it wasn't right. my best award right it was one of my best one was probably the one with mr lee because that one went overseas mm -hmm. i think mr lee 20 years of power um mm -hmm. but my first award was it was that final that first validation, you know. Right. Yeah. To like, keep to yeah. yeah to keep it was a small. I think it was like it was super small. It was stupid, but it was my first one. And right. then it was like, all right. So I took out a couple people. And let's let's go. Yeah. And then I won <laughs> five more. But um, yeah. As far as with those, that was the beginning of it. And where I need to go, I need to go get that Academy Award. Sounds crazy, but I got to do it. You got you know to, man. And, you know, House of Dolls sequel coming soon. When are we, when are we expecting that? Yeah. Uh, if it happens, uh, go tag VMI on Instagram okay. at VMI Worldwide. Okay. Uh, it should happen, hopefully, and you'll see it happening this summer. So Yeah, well, if you're tuned. casting, you know what I'm saying? We got some, you know, we're also on IMDb as well. I got you. You well. survive. Yo, I got you. Know, you. I'll try to survive the, the next house. Yeah, you know I got you. Well, so definitely. let's run it, man. But honestly, man, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for stopping right, by. For House of Dolls out now. Go check it out. It's about to be lit. Spooky October hours. And we're out of here. And peace. I'm just on the media.